Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw. I uh, just want to apologize in advance for the horrible lighting. It is snowing outside, like a lot. So I currently have all the blinds open and all the lights in my house on. And this is like the best we're going to be able to do. So apologies in advance. I will try and edit what I can, but you know, what are you going to do? Today we are doing some library looting. I'm going to show you guys some of the stuff I have brought in. Uh, so far in the month of January from the library. I am going to do fiction today and then nonfiction tomorrow in an effort to keep the videos um, a little bit shorter. I know those are usually a little bit easier to watch. So yeah, today we're going to do fiction and we'll start with Mr. Splitfoot, a novel by Samantha Hunt. Uh, the description of this one sounds really interesting. It's described as being um, kind of a ghost story. There are definitely some kind of mystical, magical realism, kind of weird elements. It is about two twins who learn that they are able to talk to the dead, and this brings them into contact with a con artist who, um, you know, kind of collects oddities of people and travels up and down the coast performing different cons and so the two twins go off with him and they disappear for years and years um so decades later one of them comes back i believe her name is clara ruth ruth visits her niece cora um and cora has heard of her aunt but has never met her and now ruth is not talking to anybody at all and so she kind of takes cora i guess and they go on a walk in the woods, Cora's pregnant, and I guess they need to walk to go get help or something. Uh, yeah, and they just kind of, uh, she's following her aunt, but her aunt's not speaking, and she doesn't know what's going on, and she's pregnant, and they're headed to this house kind of at the end of the path, but, you know, Ruth won't really say what's there, and Cora doesn't really know what's happening, so sounds very, very creepy, very, very interesting. This is one I heard about from Liberty Hardy in her tiny letter, so I will find a link to that and put it down below. But yeah, I'm really, really excited for that. Also, in kind of a similar vein, we have Half Resurrection Blues by Daniel Jose Older. This is a Bone Street Rumba novel. Um, this is basically about, um, well, I'll just, I'll read the back. It's kind of odd. Carlos de la Cruz is one of the New York City Council of the Dead's most unusual agents, and in between are partially resurrected from a death he barely recalls suffering after a life that's missing from his memory. He thinks he's one of a kind until he counters other entities walking the fine line between life and death. One in-betweener is a sorcerer. He summoned a horde of imp-like inks capable of eliminating spirits, and they're spreading through the city like a plague. They've already taken out some of NYCOD's finest, leaving Carlos desperate to stop their master before he opens up the entrada to the underworld, which would destroy the balance between the living and the dead. There you go. I mean, what else do you have to say? What? I mean, what else is there? And then we have uh, Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I have seen this... For some reason, kind of making their own on YouTube lately. A couple different people I watch read it. I know uh, Maddie Ness recently finished it. Uh, and I think, uh, who I, I forget who else, but I know it is the uh, first, one of the first monthly picks for the Inbetweeners Book Club, a middle grade book club I will link to down below. This is essentially about Sophie, and one day Sophie um, kind of gets on the bad side of a witch in her town, and the witch turns her into an old lady, and she's got to go up to the Lord Howell at his uh, strange castle, but, you know, it's, so it's, <laughs> it's another odd one. It's full of twisting adventures. She has to go, essentially, to the wizard howl to get help to reverse the aging spell, but when she gets there, she finds that his castle is incredibly odd and that he's incredibly odd, and she has to do a number of incredibly strange things, um, to get on the good side of the wizard howl so that he'll help her defeat the witch. It's supposed to be a classic. What can I say? I don't know. My tastes are skewing very odd in the month of January. Up next is Only Love Can Break Your Heart. This is um, another one I heard about from Liberty Hardy over at Book Riot. This one, I don't know if it came from her tiny letter or not, but I will see if I can find out. And if not, it came from the All the Books podcast, which I will also link to down below. Uh, this one is set in Virginia, basically. It is about a younger brother, Rocky, and his worship for his brother, Paul. But one day, Paul uh, gets really mad at their dad. And in, in order to kind of get revenge on their dad, he takes Rocky into the woods and leaves him. But then Paul disappears. And nobody knows where Paul goes. And years later, we are, it follows the story of Rocky and kind of how he's dealing with this. And he remembers being abandoned. And nobody knows where his older brother is. And it's just kind of this incredibly... It's supposed to be this kind of um, like incredibly heartbreaking debut novel... I'm really, really looking forward to getting into it. I don't know much more about it. <laughs> this next one sounds very, very odd, but that doesn't surprise me because it's by the author of Trainspotting. Uh, it's called The Sex Lives of Siamese Twins by the author, a novel by the author of Trainspotting by Irvin Welsh. 
This is kind of like The Biggest Loser meets Misery. Um, it is about a like personal trainer who one day commits like a local act of heroism and she's on the news and this woman becomes kind of obsessed with her and begins to stalk her at her personal gym and then abducts her and becomes fascinated with this book on the sex lives of Siamese twins. So I don't really know. <laughs> As you guys can kind of tell, there are definitely some some odd choices in here, but I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting to it. This one's really, it's a, it's a pretty good chunker. It's, it's almost 400 pages. Um, but it looks like it's kind of not mixed media, but like there's some emails thrown in there and looks like a couple screenshots of text messages. So they're mixing it up a bit. So that'll be nice. And I'm really looking forward to getting to that one. And then lastly, we have the Jaguars children by John Valiant. This is one that Liberty Hardy also really recommended. Another theme running through the month of January. This is about Hector. Hector um, is running a water tank full of people across the Mexican border when the truck breaks down. And the coyotes take off and they have all his money. The food and water supply is dwindling. And the only person he can get a hold of uh, that has an American phone number is some girl named Annie in uh, a phone that one of the coyotes coyotes left behind excuse me um and so he has to call her and he's trying to get help and explain his story and survive and so it's a survival tale and it's an immigration tale it's i'm really looking forward to uh reading some more uh fiction based in mexico in and around mexico that's something i enjoyed doing last year and want to do more of and yeah, that about wraps up some of the new fiction that I've gotten from the library in the month of January. Comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of them, if you know where I should start. Uh, if you have any thoughts, definitely put them down below. And as always, you can like, subscribe, and I'll see you around the internet. Bye.